This is my house. Right, what am I doing this week? Let's have a look at what's up next on the old itinerary. This week apparently I'm being forced to review the film Lord of the Elves, and what the hell is even that? It seems it's a movie, a mockbuster, and ugh. It's from the film company The Asylum, who gave the world the movie Death Racers, which is a rip-off of Death Race, which stars the insane clown posse, and somehow managed to have even less dignity than Death Race starring Jason Statham. According to IMDb, Lord of the Elves is a mockbuster of the Hobbit movies they released in 2012, starring the guy who played Tilk in Stargate SG-1 and that lady from The Crow and Crank 2 High Voltage, who looks really ill in it. And can I not do Crank 2 instead? No? It was worth a try. I'd rather do that because you know how in the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films they used a clever mix of camera trickery and CGI to make the actors playing the Hobbits all look small? In one scene, to get the effect, they supposedly had Kate Blanchett standing on a crate. Well, for Lord of the Elves, they didn't do that. Instead of getting experienced or talented actors and using camera tricks to shrink them down, they took the very different approach of, quote, rounding up every midget they could find in Cambodia. That's a joke, of course they didn't say that, but it conjured up such a funny image of the filmmakers prowling the charming streets of Krong Batambong with a net, like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that I just couldn't resist its siren song. And if that's what they had done, it would explain why the little people in Lord of the Elves look so consistently distressed and confused. Brace yourself, man. Look how strong they are. And they couldn't even find enough little people, by the way. In multiple crowd scenes, it's pretty obvious that they padded out the little people with regular Cambodian children, which is just frankly cheating. And as a result of this approach, they got people that have never acted in anything before Lord of the Elves or since. And when you watch the film, I would also argue that many of the people they got also never acted during the film. Then they got away. Idiot! Ha! He chased tree people. They got away. So, this is the plot synopsis of the movie from IMDb. In an ancient age, the peace-loving hobbits are enslaved by the Java Men, a race of flesh-eating dragon riders. The young hobbit Goban must join forces with their neighbour giants, the humans, to free his people and vanquish their enemies. So what's so bad about the film? Honestly, upon re-watching it, it's mostly the acting. And some of the dialogue, because my lord, some of the dialogue. Stand aside. This will be a mighty toss. And if you imagine for a second that I'm not going to be regularly using that clip from now on, you can't have been watching my videos for that long. Indeed, that is a mighty toss. A not little man, even the best among us, claim to do what this woman does better. And also that clip. And is it exploitative to use little people? I could maybe argue yes, but it occurs to me that the people in the film may have greatly appreciated the work, and if people want to cast them in a film and they want to do it, it's hardly my place to get offended on their behalf. But just learning that the film was shot in Cambodia and using little people reminded me of a crazy story that did the rounds some years ago, and I first saw it, I think, on the Ricky Gervais show. This is the body text from when the New York Post covered the story. Quote, A bizarre sporting event, an arena fight between one lion and 42 midgets, went horribly awry in Cambodia last Saturday, when all of the midgets were mutilated by the big cat, 28 of them fatally. The fight, which featured the Cambodian Midget Fighting League, was called in only 12 minutes, with the 14 fighters who lived suffering severe injuries, including lost limbs. And sadly, the story appears to be false, and do I really mean sadly? It's an amusing idea that news organisations would get suckered in by the story, but I kind of preferred a world where little people don't get mauled while being forced to fight a fully grown lion. It turns out it was apparently a joke by some college students that multiple news outlets fell for. The worrying part is how feasible the story is. Take this supposedly real photo from the South China Morning Post in an article about, quote, Manila's Midget Boxing Bars. And you may think that this was a long time ago, but no. This photo and headline are from a story written in 2017, and the ad outside promising Midget Boxing, 
lady boxing, lady oil wrestlers, and midget dancers. Wait, midget dancers. Stand aside. This will be a mighty toss. And are you not going to have ladies dancing? No, of course not the Philippines. That would just be weird. Asia seems to operate on a very different set of rules. And who is this bar supposed to appeal to? Michelle Yeoh. A dwarf. Now, before the film was called Lord of the Elves, it was supposedly called Clash of the Empires, and before that it was named Age of the Hobbits, until Warner Brothers and MGM allegedly sued the Asylum for copyright infringement, and the movie is currently sat on a 2.3 out of 10 on IMDb, so that's worse than Troll 2, sitting on its lofty, hoity-toity and resplendent 3 out of 10. This is my house! Because, after all, how could Lord of the Elves compete with that kind of quality? And much like Troll 2, whose name was very misleading because it was an Italian unsanctioned sequel to an American movie, Troll, starring Julia Louis-Dreyfus, that didn't actually contain any trolls in it, and it was in fact filled with goblins. Michael? Yeah? Who are the goblins? The goblins? <laughs> And much like that, War of the Elves, or Age of the Hobbits, contains in actuality zero elves and zero hobbits, and the Java Men, or Rock Men, as the bad guys are variously called in the film, are pretty much regular Cambodians that appear to have had fake pointy teeth and a monobrow crudely attached them with Elmer's glue. The hour has come for tonight's sacrifice! And why am I being put through this again? Well, while watching Madam Web, I made the hasty claim that despite many people seeming to hold the opinion that Madam Web was one of the worst movies ever, in the grand scheme of things, I really didn't think it was that bad, compared to some of the films that are lurking out there in the ether. And as a result of that claim, it seems I now have to watch and review Lord of the Elves. So it seems I may be doing that for a while, reviewing awful movies, and who cares, because YouTube are kind of doing me dirty anyway, so F it. It could be worse. I could be reviewing the contents of Vorsch's desktop folders. Lord of the Elves is also mentioned in some kind of German show by the title Die Schlechtesten Filme aller Zeiten, Lord of the Elves. And it's frankly a shame they didn't translate the film title as well, because in German it is Der Herr der Elfen, and in Spanish it's amusingly El Señor de los Elfos. I would even be tempted to translate it in German as Der Elfenmeister, but in German the show's name pretty much translates to the worst films of all time, and sadly Lord of the Elves does fit very neatly into the Schlecht category. The plot is simplistic but functional, the special effects are frankly not good, and the Asylum probably spent $200 on them if that, and they're not that different in quality to the CGI in Argyle that cost $200 million. Similarly, the practical effects in the film are not good either. In one scene, they create the effect of putting a spear through someone by just putting it behind them. But the main problem is the acting. You have Christopher Judge, who's an okay, experienced actor. Then you have pretty much the entire rest of the cast, who perform at a level below what I would expect from a school play. And some of them I don't think could even speak English, as they appear to have been very crudely dubbed. <laughs> And I suppose that brings me back to the idea of what a bad movie even is. And it seems to be a very subjective thing, because this film has some of the most consistently bad acting of any movie I've ever watched. I would say it's overall worse than The Room for acting, and I still made it through the film again. But personally, the things I hate most in a movie are sadism, if it feels like a movie is getting off on the idea of hurting people or animals, or if a movie is being very boring. Those are the main two for me, I think. Those are the things that will make me turn a movie off. From here on in, I'll be getting into spoilers, so maybe tune out now if you intend to ever watch the film, but honestly, don't do it. If you've never watched the movie, don't do it to yourself, unless you're a masochist or are particularly amused by bad movies. And I think I can actually rattle through the plot to this one faster than I managed to do Argyle. 
If you've watched either Lord of the Elves or Argyle, you have my sincere condolences. A friend showed me this the first time, and a very large proportion of the horrible movies I've watched have started with a friend saying, I have a movie that I think you'll love, and that's one of the many reasons that I don't trust other people. That is, after all, how I ended up watching Dragon Wasps. That's how I ended up watching Death Racers. That's how I ended up watching The Crow, City of Angels, and also Manos, The Hands of Fate. The movie opens up, claiming to be set in Indonesia some 12,000 years ago, with a group of little people out foraging for food. And these are the elves, hobbits, tree people, whatever. They're attacked by the film's antagonists, the Rockmen, some of whom are riding flying dragons. The Rockmen hunt the peaceful, vegetarian little people, carry some off as slaves, as sacrifices to their gods, or as food. So a family of the little people set off after the Rockmen to try and get back the abduction abducted mother of their family and free the other captives. But to get to the lair of the rockmen they have to cross a valley inhabited by, as they call them, the giants, who are in reality just ordinary people. But they're giant to the little people. Especially Christopher Judge, who's quite a big guy at six foot three, and one of the tiny women comes up about to his knee in the film. They save the life of a human hunter played by Tilk from Stargate by distracting a giant CGI rhino thing, and he agrees to help them get the mother and the other abductees back if his chief agrees to it. But the chief doesn't agree. He doesn't want to risk a war with the Rockmen. So even when one of the little people gives the humans an invention, a lot like an atlotl or a spear-throwing device, the chief still leaves the little people tied up for the Rockmen to find. Tilk then frees them, and him and the others go on a journey with the little people to the Mountain of the Rockmen. They fight some giant lizards on the way, Tilk gets poisoned but gets better, then they fight the Rockmen and win, after the chief turns up to help with the whole tribe, for reasons, and then they use the spear throwers to defeat the dragon riders. They wipe out all of the Rockmen, the captives are freed, but the chief doesn't survive the fight, then Tilk is named the new chief, and the world is now left to the humans. So, Lord of the Elves. How bad could it be? I made it through the movie for the second time. But that acting, though. At least it had Tilk in it. You were following magic rocks. <laughs> Top deck. Idiots! Huh. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. You know, I'm really wired. What do you say I take you home and eat your...